In this chapter, we're going to look at diabetes and we're also going to look at uh, thyroid. So let's start with diabetes. Diabetes is also known as diabetes mellitus or diabetes mellitus, um, also known as DM. And what diabetes is, it's basically a sugar disease. Okay, so it's a sugar disease. And let's look at what happens when someone has diabetes. So diabetes, as I said, is a sugar disease because you ha might have too much sugar in your blood. And what happens is when you eat, your food can um, that has sugar, it's called glucose. And glucose travels in your blood. Okay, so you're eating, the food gets digested, the sugar from the food goes into your bloodstream. The sugar that's in your bloodstream is known as glucose. So what glucose does is glucose needs to go into the cells of your body. So your body cell, glucose needs to go into your, into your body cell and uh, take in that sugar so that your body can function. Your body needs sugar to function. Now, what's interesting is that the sugar will not just enter the cell just like that. Instead, it needs insulin. So I for insulin, it needs insulin. Okay, so here's insulin and we see insulin giving sugar to the cell. So insulin is really, really important in our body. It's a hormone that gives sugar to the cell. So there are some situations, sometimes people can have no insulin in their body. And when you have no insulin in your body, sugar can't go to the cells. And now you have too much sugar in your body, and that's very bad. Sometimes you can have insulin in our body, but the insulin is not doing its job. The insulin is not giving sugar to the cells, and that is also bad. So we're gonna look at different situations um, known as type one and type two diabetes, and how they work and what's insulin's role in those two different types of type diabetes. So let's recap. Diabetes is basically a sugar disease when you have a decrease in insulin. So there the, the could be no insulin and that's why we're not, our body is not absorbing any sugar or, or our body cells are not absorbing any sugar or there is insulin but the insulin is not doing its job. So it could be a decrease in insulin secretion or it could be there is insulin but it's not functioning properly. So remember the sugar in our body is known as glucose. Anything that ends in O-S-E is sugar. So fructose, sucrose, glucose, so glucose intolerance. When the glucose in your body um, or the sugar in your body is not entering our body cells. So there's two types of diabetes. There's type one and type two. Type one diabetes is where your body has no insulin. So there's no insulin at all. And when you have no insulin in your body, sugar can enter your body cells. So type one, no insulin. Type two, there is insulin, and this is more common. You do have insulin in your body, but the insulin is not cooperating. The insulin is not giving sugar to the body cells. So yes, there is insulin, but the insulin is not giving sugar to the body. That is type two diabetes. It is more common. One out of three can develop it. So with type 1 diabetes, this is what actually happens. So in a normal, healthy person, we have a pancreas. And if you look at one cell in the pancreas, it's known as a beta cell. And so the beta cells release, it actually secretes and releases and makes insulin. But when you have diabetes type 1, if you look at your beta cell, you can see it's grayed out here because the beta cell is destroyed. And when the beta cell is destroyed, we can't get insulin no insulin is made. And remember, we need insulin to give sugar to our cells. So type 1 diabetes is absolute insulin deficiency, means you have no insulin. Your beta cells are not producing insulin. So your pancreas, the cells in your pancreas, which, is, has, um, which has beta cells, are not producing insulin. And so someone who has type 1 diabetes they may be hungry all the time, they may go to the washroom to pee all the time, they may get very thirsty, dry mouth, and so on and so forth. So what happens with someone with type 1 diabetes, we need to inject, they need to inject themselves all the time with insulin so that insulin goes into the body and gives and spreads sugar to where it needs to go or sends sugar to where it needs to go. 
There's also type 2 diabetes, which I will talk about, and there's also something called gestational diabetes, and this only happens when you are pregnant. So if you are pregnant, uh, one of the things they test for it is to see if you have diabetes during pregnancy, and if you do, it's known as gestational diabetes. Diabetes is pretty bad because if it's not controlled, all of these things could happen. You could get stroke, you could get blind, heart attack, kidney failure, you could even lose uh, your leg or foot, so amputation. So type 2 diabetes, this is more common, okay, and this is insulin resistance, which basically means that you have insulin in your body, but it's not doing its job. It's not sending sugar to the body cells. So you have insulin, the insulin is just not working. Sometimes you may even have too much insulin, but the insulin is not doing its job. And what's important to note is happens more commonly in people that are, uh, as you get older, you're, you could be at risk for it. And um, people who are obese are usually the people that have type 2 diabetes um, because one of the things you'll look at is the treatment for diabetes is, yes, medication, but if you exercise and watch your diet, the type 2 diabetes can go away. So if you're obese and you're not exercising and you're not um, watching your diet, you're at really high risk for getting type 2 diabetes. But if you start exercising and start watching your diet, then um, you know hopefully you can control type 2 diabetes and not need medication. Uh, there is a slight genetic component as well, of course, but um, studies are showing that it's mostly it can be controlled with exercise and diet. So let's say you know someone who has type 2 diabetes. What that what's happening to that person is they have high blood glucose levels, which basically means in their bloodstream there's lots of sugar. It's also known as hyperglycemia. So GL stands for glucose. Hyper, think of too much. When you have too much energy or too much sugar in this case. So hyper, too much. And this can happen after meals. So if you eat and all of a sudden you have so much sugar in your body and there's so much sugar in your bloodstream, but the insulin isn't giving the sugar to where it has to go. This is also known as postprandial hyperglycemia. And postprandial hyperglycemia, postprandial basically means after eating. You, so this basically means you have too much sugar after post, after eating. So what are some complications of diabetes mellitus or diabetes mellitus? Well, there are several. Microvascular stands for a small blood, small vessels. So think of small vessels in our body. So our eye has small um, vessels, and um, our vision could be impaired if you um, are, don't take care, or if you don't, if you don't manage your diabetes. Your gums can get really inflamed. Your kidneys can get damaged. Your nerves can get damaged as well. Um, you could get like sharp cramps and sharp uh, pain in your arm and in your leg. And you could even get like foot ulcers, and um, so you're you're at risk basically for all of these things. You're also at risk for macrovascular complications. Macro think of big. Macro means big, so big blood vessels. And so when I think of big big blood vessels, I think of arteries, so your heart. So there is a link between heart and diabetes. And what's important to us in dentistry is periodontal disease. If you have a client or a patient who has um, diabetes they have a high chance of getting periodontal disease, which means they have a high chance of losing their teeth. So we need to educate them on the link between diabetes and periodontal disease and on telling them how important it is to take care of their teeth so that they don't lose their teeth.